So apologies for any shadows that may appear in this video. I'm doing it on my phone. Will be slightly higher resolution than my cameras, uh, but they're a bit full of various unedited pieces at the minute, so I don't want to compile my problems with adding yet more footage to the cameras to sort out during editing. But as you can see here, I've got one of my uh, GP9s, I think it is, Norfolk and Southern Loco, obviously American HO. It's a tad smaller than a British Class 20 Loco. Um, and it's probably, I guess, from the 90s, early 2000s. Um, and it's clearly, as you can see with this, it's not DCC ready, friendly, yes, but not ready. So what I want to do to save... I'm not saying, but make it easier should there be a component failure. I want to put, if I can, this little 8-pin socket and then attach the chip into it. Obviously, find a home for the uh, chip. It looks like we've got a little bit of room to play with under here. There's not really any room along the top of this weight. This weight does remove. We could take it off, but then it defeats the object of... Uh, having a nice weighty loco to pull the wagons all of the chassis is metal also we've got a little bit of space here above the uh, gearbox of this bogey where the bonnet is we could push it into the cab there is no detail in this cab at all um, and there's just a slot there behind the cab glazing where this little interior bulb goes which sort of serves as a very subtle bit of light bleeding through the cab glazing to give the effect that there's a little bit of illumination in the cab but its primary function is to light up the uh, center two lamps it does have a little bit of uh, the number board which has got no detail in it either um, and the back does have provision where well, it's got a little piece of glazing in it so we could put an LED in both ends because we'll need to change it to an LED as opposed to the tungsten just because it draws less current uh, which will make it easier on the chip and the uh, pull system really so this is a four function chip so we could potentially put a rear running light and a front running light and we could control them via the functions or we could have a cab interior light but there's not really a lot of point on this one as <laughs> there isn't really a cab interior there's no um, modeling at all of it uh, not as it came with it it's all open and straight through so we can remove this little bit of weight to go make it a little bit easier so we need to separate the wires from the motor we've got dual pickup on each bogey so we'll need to disconnect those join the two ends together as they already are on the motor and attach them to the appropriate pieces on this board which does give you the uh, necessary connections it is a little bit bigger than i was expecting but i think as long as i can trim the i might trim those uh pins down then maybe a bit of black tack and attach that underneath so it can be removed to aid fitting a decoder excuse me uh, a decoder socket and plug arrangement if it doesn't fit doesn't work then obviously i'll have to just trim off the plug on this end there's no cost saving buying the ones without the plug they're exactly the same price so you might as well get two uses you've either got the option of hard wiring or just chop the plug off so that is our next little project to dcc this one i have a number of these boards uh, to complete a changeover of some of the uh, old stock i've got to dcc so there's a little comparison of before and after just with a pair of flush cutters trim them off you can see there now we just have a slight little pip these boards uh, aren't too bad but you obviously don't 
if you've got the uh, ones with the copper tracks on the top, don't be too aggressive because obviously you'll uh, defeat the object of the solder. But that gives us a better surface. I've taped double overlap and bound the portion to give us some insulation. So I might just do the black tack. We'll see how we go. I don't want to do too thick a blob of, you can't really control hot milk. Because it obviously solidifies too quickly. So I might just stick with black tack. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so that's the first bit of wiring done. We've connected the motor back in. Put the prop shaft back in a little bit fiddly. And then took the wires from the motor to the pads and the pickup wires from the track power to each side of the opposing connections you have to basically nominate which one's going to be live which one's going to be neutral because obviously it depends on the polarity you've set up on your track if you have done it wrong and forward on your controller is reverse on the actual locomotive then you can go into most of them and change it on the cv setting failing that you just have to get the iron out and swap the wires around. So all we're left to do now is fix up the LED. I'll just trim the wires down for that. And uh, attach that. And then we'll do a test before we put everything back together. And uh, make sure we can find a home for everything and get the body back on. So I put the weight back on and realised I had screwed up. Because my intention originally was to put the block underneath the weight here in this clear area. I'd made the motor wires too short. So, to uh, make the best of the worst, I have opted, fortunately, I think... The circuit board will clear the cab moulding. So what I've done is insulated the front of this with some cellar tape or insulation tape. I've then put a self-adhesive pad. I haven't attached it yet because obviously I may need to move it. So the idea is that uh, that will sit snugly there, which is over the cab area. Then the light wire I may need to shorten or move, depending on, I'm not obviously going to do it until I know I can get away with the circuit board there. And the chip can live underneath there, and I can twist the wire up and tape it, and put the uh, chip underneath there. So that's the workaround, so it's us about face in other words, because I was planning on putting that there and the chip up in here in the hood. But, uh, you know, if it works, it works. That's all that matters. Um, so, I've just sort of jerry-rigged everything together, pending what I've just said. So, I will go and put it on the track in the shed, and test it on DCC, see what happens. And we'll go from there. Okay, so hopefully the blow air heat is not making too much noise. We'll just put a bit of tape on the front just to hold the... Uh, circuit board from drifting on or anything metal while I've got it going around the track so track is clear let's turn the power on and see if uh, it's pop whiz or bang nothing so far That's encouraging, and as it's going forward when my controller is forward, let's try reverse. That is a relief. And uh, a loco lamp. Is on. I'm 
Let's keep an eye on those drifting wires. Hesitant there. A little tight spot on that corner as many a loco finds. Could just be a wheel gauging a little bit. But, uh, bit of a brush by there on that beer fridge. So, looks like a success. Just got a few more to do. Okay, so it's took a little bit of routing the wires many times to find somewhere where they would all be out of the way all of the time, even black tack trying to hold the wires back in where I needed them to be then meant it kept sticking to the body and the fouling. But eventually we've got there, the culprit was uh, the little roof glazing detail has got a raised section which helps channel the light from the bulb. It was actually fouling over the circuit board so I've just sort of nipped an angle out. That's allowed me to clear down. There's a recess there for the lamp which is slightly longer now, it's an LED. So I will have to just test it again on the road just to make sure there's no wires nicked. Visually it looks fine, so uh, yeah, should be all good to go finally.